Hi, I'm Ron Polk, designer of the Polk Workbench. And this is a short video series showing how easy it is to design a fairly complex model in SketchUp. So let's get started. Okay, so rectangle. And I'll go 47, comma, 80, enter. Push, pull, 6.3, enter. So I'm going to grab the tape measure. I'm going to hit move and I'm going to copy this. So if I need to and come until it centers there and then I'm going to grab the tape and move it up straight up. Once I have it in that direction, I'm just going to go up and click there. And then I'm going to grab this surface. I am going to Take my line tool. Actually, I'm going to take my three point line tool, the curve tool. I'm going to go from here to here to here. And then my line tool from there to there. Escape there to there. And I think since it's going to be a fair amount of work, I'm going to make one side and then copy it over to the other. So to do that, I'm going to add some lines here. I want to put Festool in there, but this is, you know, it's on a curved surface. Now I could just put it on there flat and it would be sticking up, but, and I'm sure there's a way um, to wrap text on a curved surface. I know there is, I've seen it done um, somewhere, but, um, you know, there's maybe a plug-in for that, but I, I've got a way that works. It's a little bit of work. But, you know, it's one of those uh, workarounds. So I'm going to grab um, the 3D text. I'm going to just type in Fest Tool. And actually, I already have, I'll click open the fonts. Uh, I'm in the Adobe Fan uh, standard. That looks good enough. Uh, I don't want it filled right now. Or, or I don't want it filled in, in, when I, after I get done with it. But I need it filled now for... Um, extruding it. If I if I didn't fill it, I, I wouldn't have a surface. So I'm going to leave it filled. And 10 millimeters is probably pretty close. So I'm going to leave that. I can always scale it. So I will hit place. And that looks pretty good. And I'm going to grab the little those little. Uh, just grab the rotation tool. And I will just click on there. Go to there. And come up. Now I'm going to hit the M key for move. I'm going to find the middle, which is right there, and then I'm going, you know, in the direction that I want to go, which is red, and I'm going to hold the shift key, and I'm going to come in here until I find the middle. And you can see it snaps to it right there. Boom. And then I'm going to move it to the line. The direction I want to go snaps to it. And now I'm going to move it down into so that it's kind of cutting you can see that it's sticking up above and below and what i'm going to do is um, right click intersect faces with model and now you can see those lines that are drawn so i've, I've cut out you know these letters and now i have to delete what's on the top and the bottom. The best way to do that is to 
find an orientation that you're not going to grab anything you don't want to grab. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to hit space bar. And if I go right to left, you can see it doesn't select anything because it, it only selects what's entirely in the bounding box. Mm -hmm. But if I come this way and I hit delete, then you can see that it has left the cutout, but it's gotten rid of the what was uh, above and below. Lines on it, and I'm just going to move in the proper direction, and 75, enter. Actually, I'll go 80, enter. And then I'm just going to grab it and move it with the Alter Option key, click, and I'm going to type 1, enter. Missed that there, so I'm going to grab it again, move, throw option, and one, enter. And so I've got it, and I'm going to go, oh, let's go X100, enter. I'm going to grab it now and move it onto this part here. Get it. There it is, right there. That's the middle. Make a group so it all stays together. I'm going to move this into place. And it can go anywhere on the line there. It's because it's just how far the tape is pulled out. But I will get it so that it the tape looks like it's going into the round there. And I can pull that down, move that down so that it's near the base going in the blue direction shift and then I will bring it into the tape a little bit more so it somewhat of course you know we're transitioning and I uh, could have more of a straight piece coming off but we'll go with that bucket tool and if I zoom out and come over here hit the command key and click on that color it'll sample that color and I know that color I want the tape to be that color okay and now I want to do black so let me just find a color here go to colors and choose black and I want to get into that group bucket tool black I want to get into this one and I'll go ahead and grab that and shift so I've got the air, black arrow the space bar and I'm hitting the option key and now the bucket tool black and hit the B key for bucket it remembers the last color and then I want to make this here the green so I'll come back over here hit the B key for bucket and I'm gonna hold down the option or I'm sorry the uh, command key and I'm gonna sample that color that B key holding down the command key make it that color one final piece to make the base and the index which is one part rectangle Okay, now I want to upload it to the 3D Warehouse so anybody can download it and use it. So I'll go to File, 3D Warehouse, Share Model. I have an account there, so sign into that. CR Polk. So it's going to be there. It's still uploading. So anybody can go and type in my name and find it you can type in uh, just Paul probably yep so it'll be uploaded there um, long before this video is published so it will be there you can download it if you want well that took a bit of time but it was a complicated model and hopefully you picked up some tips that you can use in your construction business or your woodworking business if you like these videos be sure to subscribe like them and share them with others thanks for taking the time to watch have a great day